Hi everyone, in today's video we'll take a look at how you can set up a Spark R library. So Spark R is really a combination of two things. Uh, it really allows for us to uh, benefit from the distributed and fast computational capabilities uh, of Spark uh, along with uh, the, the workflow and the analysis, data science analysis if you will, of uh, the power of R. Uh, so combining that, you get Spark R. Now, Spark R, um, setting it up is uh, slightly different from other packages that you normally set up um, uh, within R. So it's not a case where you run uh, install.packages and uh, say Spark R. No, uh, the process is uh, slightly different, and that's what I'll cover today. And um, uh, again, there are two broad ways that you can work with Spark R. So there's actually... Um, a Spark R shell, and uh, then of course uh, we can uh, use Spark R from within R Studio. So both of which I'll cover in the video today. Uh, broadly, the purpose of um, uh, showcasing Spark R in this video is to, uh, to uh, really highlight how we can combine the strengths of two. That's R and Spark. So R. Uh, most of the libraries that you've been working with R is uh, really not that high performant. Uh, it's um, uh, most of the packages are like single threaded and uh, R itself does not use uh, memory quite uh, efficiently uh, and it's pegged to um, you know the the machine that you're running all your scripts in whereas with uh, the capabilities of um, integrating R and Spark uh, allows for us to run much larger massive uh, data processing workloads uh, and offset that workload to um, an R cluster and R primarily becomes the uh, the interface for us to execute these commands, see the results, do some interactive uh, data analysis, um, kind of like workflow. Now, the magic of uh, connecting the two together is actually done through uh, Java and JNI interfaces, but that's all handled in the background for us. Um, so it's a very smooth uh, experience uh, when working directly from within R and R Studio. All right, so let's uh, let's dive into the agenda in a bit more detail. Okay, so let's dive into the agenda in a bit more detail. So we'll talk about what my current environment is. Um, it'll help you um, uh, perform these steps on your machine if you understood what my environment looks like. Uh, we'll talk about the setup step itself, and then finally we'll take a look at a couple of quick demos. Nothing too exhaustive, but uh, we'll take a look at um, running Spark R uh, from the shell and also uh, from uh, run some commands from within R Studio. So again, uh, fairly simple set of uh, steps here. So one, in terms of the environment, um, I'm running on um, uh, Ubuntu. Um, uh, you can pretty much replicate whatever I'm doing um, on my machine, on your version of uh, Linux, or even tweak it for your Windows environment. Um, the version of uh, Spark I'm running on is 1.6.1. That's uh, currently the most recent release uh, as of this video recording. And uh, I've already installed R and R Studio in advance. Uh, so if you're not uh, familiar with how to install Spark or R and R Studio, um, uh, take a look at some of my previous videos. Uh, the setup itself is fairly uh, straightforward. Uh, so head over to uh, your Spark folder. So Spark. And uh, from within Spark, you'll notice uh, there's a folder called R. So let's uh, go to that folder. And uh, you need to run this uh, uh, command uh, that's install dash dev so uh, install dash dev I'm not gonna run it because I've already done that and once you run that it uh, creates this uh, lib folder and uh, uh, there's uh, a few files uh, set up there so that's lib so um, by the end of uh, running that script uh, you should have these uh, files and folders in and um, that's pretty much it for the setup. So if you go back uh, uh, to your Spark home, and now uh, we can actually run Spark R. So let's run Spark R. Spark R, so that's uh, in bin, sorry, bin Spark R. Okay, 
So it's uh, just uh, starting up. So you can see it's um, running Spark 1.6. Um, the standard set of uh, uh, messages that if, if you were to run on a regular Spark um, Spark shell, uh, the Scala shell, but uh, of course now it's all uh, with uh, the power of R uh, at your disposal. So uh, here's one option at your hand that if you wanted to run uh, Spark um, or R commands directly from within the shell, uh, here's one option. Uh, the other more convenient option is uh, using uh, from within an IDE like our studio. Um, so let's cover that as well. Uh, keep in mind that uh, when you run it from the shell, um, you you have the Spark context and uh, Spark SQL, uh, uh, the SQL context already created for you. So uh, you don't have to uh, set it up or wire it up um, if you're using the shell. But if you're using our studio, um, you'll need to do some initial setup first. So let's take a look at that. Um, so here, um, uh, the code that I'm using is um, basically uh, something I've uh, um, um, taken out of um, the Spark R uh, page. So head over to the page to see uh, the actual code if you wanted to follow along. Um, so wh what we're basically doing is uh, ensuring that uh, the 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 Spark R library, the the one that I, I just uh, talked about. Uh, that's included uh, in your list of uh, uh, libraries that um, R is going to look up. Uh, so, so far in the code here, so just walking through, so we are going to set the uh, environment variable. So let's uh, set that. Um, we'll make sure that um, uh, as part of uh, the, the part that uh, R looks for, uh, we have um, this folder, so that's basically uh, the Spark home directory R and the library folder that we talked about that's uh, that's uh, included in the list as well. So that's the next step. All right, and then finally we we need to create uh, uh, the Spark context. Uh, so uh, to help us uh, create the Spark context, uh, we have the Spark R in it, um, and uh, Again, uh, if you're familiar with uh, how Spark works, um, this um, does not require a lot of explanation, but uh, just emphasizing that I'm using my local uh, machine um, and not, uh, in this particular case, I'm not pointing it to uh, a Spark master, either um, say Yarn or Mesos or anything like that. It's just uh, using the local uh, 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 Spark uh, machine. And then finally, we'll um, uh, we'll create the SQL context as well. So give that um, a few seconds uh, for it to load. So again, the process is um, identical to uh, us running it on the shell. Uh, you'll also notice that um, uh, when anytime you run it uh, from within um, our studio here, or R in general, it uh, creates a new Spark application. And uh, we also have um, uh, a UI uh, for us to go to. Um, to track the jobs and tasks. So let's open that. And again, we haven't run anything. Uh, you'll notice it's 41 because uh, um, in parallel I've opened, uh, or earlier, I've opened the Spark shell. And um, that's already taken up port 40, uh, 40, 40 so uh, we have 40, 41 here. All right, so um, it's all wired up and all, uh, it's all uh, ready for us to start using. Oops, uh, let me just open that in full screen mode uh, so that you see all the messages and the prompt here. Okay, so uh, we are all good. Uh, we, the last thing we'll do is uh, uh, create the SQL context as well. Um, so now we can do some basic, um, uh, you know, um, some commands, run some commands um, uh, from within R. Uh, you'll notice that it's uh, really easy for us to move data between R and Spark. So uh, this is an example of uh, um, a, a data set that you have out of the box from uh, within R. So uh, let's take a look at uh, that data set. Um, so here you can see it's uh, uh, a sample data set that you get within R. Uh, so now uh, we can pass that to R. So uh, we are now creating a data frame and um, that orchestration between um, uh, the data or passing the data from within R uh, to Sparks all handled uh, in the background. Now we have a data frame. 
uh, and again if uh, I'm assuming you have some familiarity with uh, 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 Spark SQL. Uh, so we are going to register uh, a temporary table um, using uh, the data frame that we have just uh, received from Spark and uh, finally we'll run some uh, SQL uh, commands here. So as you can see it's, uh, uh, it's, it's really easy for us to work uh, combining both the Power of R and also using the strength of uh, R. I'm sorry, of Spark uh, from a distributed computing standpoint, and using some of the Spark libraries uh, like things like uh, Spark SQL and uh, getting that data, bringing it back into R. And of course, now that it's back in R, uh, we can do things which uh, R is really good at, like um, uh, analyzing that data um, using R libraries right now. If uh, we don't have uh, the required libraries within Spark, uh, we can now extract that data, bring it into R, and use native R libraries to work on that data set, do things like uh, data visualization, for example, from directly within R. So now that we've uh, run the previous command, uh, we now have uh, the results from the uh, SQL, Spark SQL query there. So now we can perform operations uh, on that data set from within R, like say for example, uh, if we want to know what the count is of um, this uh, result set, or if we wanted to uh, see what uh, the result contains, like head for example, res results. So here you can see that it's um, uh, getting the data from Spark and uh, presenting it back um, within R. So again, a quick example of how we can efficiently or effectively uh, move data from between R and uh, Spark, uh, uh, Spark and then uh, you know allow for Spark to do much of that data processing and then bring it back. Uh, of course, in most cases, you will be working with a much larger data set that it's not uh, natively managed within R. Uh, so uh, as an example, if you wanted to point uh, to a data that's uh, sitting on HDFS or other uh, data sources uh, and immediately benefit from the capabilities of um, Spark's uh, distributed computing framework, these are all very much possible. And uh, we'll cover further scenarios uh, in a future video in R and the Spark R. Uh, so hope you like this video of getting started uh, using Spark R. Uh, do subscribe for future updates. Thanks for watching.